I guess we have come too far from our camp. When will we go back? I am feeling hungry. It will take some time, Tofu. Those berries look yum. I think I can treat on them for the time being. Tofu, stop! Do you even know what those berries are about? They look yum to me. That is all I know. But they can be poisonous. You are in the middle of a jungle. Poisonous? Come, let me tell you a story on our way back to the camp. On a long sunny day, there was a fox walking in a desert. Hungry and thirsty, all that he could see was miles of sand and barren rocks. Oh, it is so hot. I need water badly. He kept on walking and suddenly he saw a well. Thank God, I finally found a well. Now I will no longer be thirsty. He ran and ran in great excitement. The moment he leaped on the well's wall to check water, he lost his balance and fell in the well. Help! Help! Somebody, please help me! This well is really deep! How would I ever get out of this place? Nearby, a goat was passing the well. When she heard the fox, she went to peep over the well. Hey fox! What are you doing inside this well? Oh goat! Isn't it too hot outside? I just came into this well to cool myself off. Why don't you also hop in and enjoy this cool and refreshing water? Not even thinking for a second, the goat jumped into the well. Hey fox! You were right! This water is actually very refreshing. I could spend all my day out here. After some time, the goat stops and asks the fox, Wait a second! How in the world will we manage to get out of this well? Oh, it's going to be simple. If you stand on your two feet, and push me up, I can manage to reach to the top of the well and then pop out of the well. The goat once again, without thinking twice, does as the fox said. Hey fox, what about me? How would I get out? Ha 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 ha. I guess you have to think about it on your own. But I helped you getting out of the well. Who asked you to? You should have thought about the consequences before taking any actions. So one should look before one leaps. Yeah, Tofu. Always. Because you never know what danger you might get into. And those wild berries they might have been harmful for you. Uh, yeah, dear. One should always check before taking a step further. Look, there is our camp. And I can already smell the dinner is ready. Yay! Let's go!
What's wrong, Tofu? I can't sleep. Would a bedtime story help? Yeah, I guess. The Ugly Duckling Once near a beautiful pond, there lived a handsome duck couple. They were very excited as the babies were about to get hatched from the eggs. The papa duck was so eager to see his babies that all he could do was roam here and there in anxiety. Suddenly, what they hear is sweet little quack quacks coming from the nest and the papa duck just rushes to the nest to catch the first glimpse of his babies. Oh my god! They are so lovely! Suddenly, a whole squack comes from below mama duck. You are so ugly and pale. You can't be our baby. The papa and mama duck along with their four babies sail away far away from the ugly duckling leaving him behind in dismay and all alone. The poor duckling doesn't know what's wrong with him. He checks his wings, his beak, his feet, but all looks fine. Suddenly, he turns around and sees his reflection in the pond. And what he sees sends him complete disappointment. Nobody loves me. What would I do now? Where would I go? The ugly duckling starts walking in complete sadness. So many days, weeks and months pass by and the poor ugly duckling wanders all alone in the deep forest. Suddenly, he stops and feels extremely cold. Oh, it is so cold! I wish I had a warm house too! Suddenly, a huge ball of snow comes rolling from behind and the poor duckling gets caught in that and starts screaming for help. A woodcutter cutting the woods in a nearby place hears the scream of the duckling and runs for help. Oh, poor thing! Come here! You need something warm to drink! The woodcutter picks up the ugly duckling and keeps him in the warmth of his overcoat. He takes him home and keeps him wrapped in a warm blanket right in front of the fireplace. Don't worry, poor little thing. I will take care of you. And like this, many years pass by and the ugly duckling grew under the care of the woodcutter. But one thing he made sure, never did he see his reflection again. One day, on a sunny afternoon, he was wandering around the sides of a lake. Suddenly, he sees a wedge of swans swimming in the pond. Look at those swans! 
They are so beautiful. I wish I was a beautiful duck too. I have no friends because I am so ugly. I feel oh so lonely. To his amazement, he sees the wedge of swans coming towards him. What he sees is the most beautiful swan ever. Hey, we have never seen you around. Are you new here? No, I live nearby with the woodcutter. It's just that I don't come out often. Why is that so? Because I am an ugly duck. Nobody loves me. Nobody wants me. <laughs> <laughs> Not to his surprise, he sees them laughing at him. He decides to turn back when suddenly he hears the voice of the beautiful swan. Wait, where are you going? See, even you guys make fun of me. That's the reason I never come out. We laughed because you call yourself a duck. What do you mean? Yes. You are not a duck. You are a swan. And I haven't seen such a handsome swan ever in my life. He couldn't believe of what he just heard and stood there in a state of shock. And after a few seconds, managed to say, What? The beautiful swan held the hand of the duck and took him near the pond. See yourself. You are a swan. The ugly duckling very reluctantly bends over the water because he doesn't want to see the ugly him. But what he sees leaves him in total disbelief. He is not a duck. He is a swan. A handsome young swan. I am a swan. He jumps and flies and swims in sheer happiness and then suddenly stops to thank the beautiful swan. Thank you so much for making me know who I am. <laughs> so now that you know you are a swan, would you join our wedge? We would live together as a happy family. Yes, I would love to do that. And then the ugly duckling, oops, the handsome swan jumps into the water with the rest of the swans and swims proudly with them. So the poor duck was never a duck, a swan all throughout? <laughs> yeah, and that's what the moral of the story is. A diamond doesn't know its worth till it's polished. Aha! Uh -huh. Good night, Tofu. It's time to sleep now. Slow and steady wins the race. Slow and steady wins the race. What happened, Tofu? What is it that you are thinking? Yes, dear. I am not able to understand how can a person win the race if he is slow and yet steady? There is a very famous story behind this. Should I tell you that first? Sure. The Hare and the Tortoise 
Long ago, in a forest, a small get-together of animals was taking place. You know what? I can beat anyone in this forest. Nobody can beat me in a race. Yes, I have seen him running. I bet he can beat anyone in this forest. Suddenly, from the crowd, they hear somebody laughing. <laughs> Why are you laughing? You think you can beat me in a race? I may not disagree with you, O oh Mr. Hare. But I might not deny that I have no fear of competing with you. Oh really? So let's have a race and let's see who wins. So one fine sunny day, all the animals gathered for the race. Everybody was sure that the hare is going to be a clear-cut winner. <laughs> May the best man win. And that is me, said the hare proudly. <laughs> now let's go, old man. I'll beat you in a second. The hare runs so fast that all the things on the path go for a spin. On the other hand, the tortoise is running too, but at such a pace that even snails could pass by him easily. <laughs> Suddenly, the hare stops and looks behind. Oh my lord! That tortoise is gonna take ages to reach this point. So let's just stop here and take some rest. By the time he reaches here, I would get good rest and then cover him up in a blink of a second. In the meanwhile, the tortoise slowly and steadily reaches the point where the hare is fast asleep. He very quietly tiptoes past the hare and the hare is all ignorant of this fact. Suddenly, the hare gets up by the rows of the crowd, cheering up the tortoise. Go tortoise, go! Go tortoise! Oh my lord, how is that possible? 
over. I kept on sleeping for so long that the tortoise is about to finish the race. He runs and runs and runs. But to his disappointment, the tortoise just manages to finish the race before he could. In the story, the hare was so full of himself. He was overconfident that he would surely beat the tortoise in the race. Because he is faster than that poor being in every other way. But, but the hare underestimated the tortoise and succumbed in his own fake overconfidence. Yes, and that's why only a person who thinks calmly and is not overconfident of himself wins the race in every sphere of life. Proud people can't survive for long. Hmm. What happened? Why can't you sleep? I don't know. Can you please put me off to sleep by telling me a story? Sure, Tofu. I'll tell you one of my favorite story. The Little Red Riding Hood Little Red Riding Hood lived in a hut near a forest with her mother. She always wore a beautiful red hood while going out. One day, she went to see her grandmother. On her way, she met a wolf. Huh? Hello, where are you going? I am going to see my granny. She lives behind that hill. The wolf got a wicked idea. <laughs> the wolf ran to Granny's house. got into Granny's bed. After some time, Little Red Riding Hood reached the house. She saw the wolf lying in her Granny's bed. Oh Granny, what big eyes you have! So that I can see you better. Granny, what big ears you have! So that I can hear you better. Granny, what a big nose you have! So that I can smell you better. Oh Granny, what big teeth you have! So that I can eat you better! <laughs> oh my god! Help me! Help me! Nearby, a woodcutter was in the forest and he heard the scream. He ran to the house just to see the wolf attacking the little girl. He hit the wolf over the head and this made the wolf open his mouth and shout. The granny jumped out. The wolf <gasps> ran away and the little red riding hood never saw the wolf again.
So Tofu, little red riding hood, was able to save herself and her old grandmother too. That monkey over there tried to imitate me. <laughs> oh, really? Tia, why are you laughing? Wait, I'll tell you why monkeys do this. The monkeys and the cap seller. Once, a cap seller was going to sell his caps in a village market. Caps, 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 5 rupees caps, 10 rupees caps, caps, caps. He was going through a forest. He was carrying a basket of red caps on his head. He got tired in the heat of the sun and thought of lying down under a tree for some time. He put his basket on the ground. <sighs> I am so tired. Let me take a small nap. There were monkeys on that tree. They came down <laughs> and one by one took all the caps from the cap seller's basket. Then they climbed on the tree. When the cap seller woke up, he was shocked to see his basket empty. He searched for his caps everywhere. To his surprise, he saw the monkeys were wearing them. He found that the monkeys were imitating him. So he started throwing his cap down and the monkeys did so. The cap seller collected all the caps, put them back in his basket and went away happily. So Tofu, we should deal with cleverness in such situations because wisdom helps during difficult times. I understand. Tofu, I think you should help the poor dog. Why, Tia? Wait, I'll explain this to you through a story. The Lion and the Mouse One day, a lion was sleeping in his den. 
A mouse was also playing nearby. Little mouse began running up and down upon him. This soon wakened the lion. Angry at the little mouse, the lion caught the mouse and said, You little mouse, how dare you wake me? I will kill you. The mouse was frightened and prayed to the lion. Pardon, O oh king, please do not kill me. I am a little creature. Please let me go and I will do you a good return one day for sparing my life. The lion was rather amused to hear this, thinking, What good can he do to me? But let him go. A few days after, the lion was walking in a jungle. He found himself caught in a hunter's net. He roared and rolled to get out of the net, but he failed. The lion was pleading for help. Help me, help me. The mouse, whose life was saved by the lion, heard the roar and ran to the lion and said, Don't worry, my friend. I will save you. The mouse gathered all his friends and told them, We all have to help my friend and set him free. The mouse and his friends cut through the net and set the lion free. The lion escaped and thanked the mouse. And from that day, they became the best of friends. Like the little mouse and lion had become friends and in the end helped each other, you should help this dog too. Because a friend in need is a friend indeed. Tofu, don't worry. We will reach our camp soon. But I am still feeling scared. <laughs> Wait, let me tell you a similar story. It will help you to distract your mind. Goldilocks and the Three Bears Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Goldilocks. She had golden hair. One morning, she was walking in the forest and lost her way. She saw a friendly cottage. Wow! She knocked on the door. But nobody was there. She went inside. The friendly cottage belonged to three bears. Goldilocks was very hungry. She saw three bowls of porridge on the table. First, she tried a spoonful from Daddy Bear's big bowl. This porridge is too hot. Next, she tried from Mama Bear's medium bowl. This porridge is also too hot. Finally, she tried from Baby Bear's small bowl. This porridge is just right. And she ate the whole bowl. Now Goldilocks was tired. She saw three chairs kept in a room. This chair is too big. This chair is too big too. This chair is just right. But the chair broke. Goldilocks was very tired, so she went 
upstairs. She saw three beds in the room. She sat on the first bed and thought, This bed is too hard. This bed is too soft. This bed is just right. Soon the three bears came home. Who's been eating my porridge? Asked Daddy Bear. Who's been eating my porridge? Asked Mama Bear. Who's been eating my porridge and eaten it all up? Cried Baby Bear. Who's been sitting on my chair? Daddy Bear howled. Who's been sitting on my chair? Wondered Mama Bear. Who's been sitting on my chair and it's broken? Cried Baby Bear. They went up in the room and saw Who's been sleeping on my bed? Said Daddy Bear. Who's been sleeping on my bed? Said Mama Bear. Who's been sleeping on my bed? And she is still there! Screamed Baby Bear. Goldilocks woke up and saw the three bears. She was so frightened that she jumped out of the bed and raced through the forest. And she never came back. Oh, Goldilocks lost her way too, just like us. <laughs> no, Tofu. We have not lost our way. See, we are already at the camp. Mmm! Mmm! These cookies are so yum. I can eat them forever. Tofu? Have you ever imagined what if these cookies become alive? Alive? Hmm, this reminds me of a story. The Gingerbread Man Long ago, there lived an old couple. One day, the old woman cooked a gingerbread cookie in the shape of a man. As soon as the gingerbread man was cooked, he jumped out of the tin and ran out of the open window, shouting, Don't eat me! He ran away as fast as he could. The old couple tried to chase the gingerbread man but he was too fast for them. Soon, a hungry pig saw the gingerbread man and said, Stop! I would like to eat you! He too joined the chase. The gingerbread man was too fast and said, you can't catch me. I am the gingerbread man. A little further, a hungry cow saw the gingerbread man and said, Stop! I would like to eat you. 
she too joined the chase. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. Next, he met a horse. The horse too joined the chase. Finally, the gingerbread man came to a river and stopped as the river could make him soggy. A clever fox came by and wanted to eat him up. But he pretended to be nice and offered help to the gingerbread man. He asked the gingerbread man to climb on his head so that he could take him across the river. The gingerbread man was so scared of water that he agreed. As soon as they reached the other side, the fox tossed up the gingerbread man in the air. He opened his mouth and ate him up. That was the end of the gingerbread man. <laughs> I don't want my cookies alive and get eaten by a wolf. <laughs> Enjoy your cookies, Tofu. Tofu? But why so? I'm just trying to get my ball out. But see those red ants. You better be careful. Thanks, dear. Sit. I'll tell you an interesting story. The fox and the sick lion. Once upon a time, there lived a lion in the forest. As the lion was growing old, he was unable to hunt for his food. He thought that without food, he would die of starvation. So the lion thought of a plan. He decided to lie down in the cave and pretend that he is ill. And whosoever will come to meet him will become his prey. Being the king of the jungle, the lion announced he was sick and summoned the animals to come and hear his last will. The lion put his sinful plan to practice and it started working. Poor animals didn't know about his wicked plan and fell into his trap. Many of his well-wishers got killed.
One day, a fox came to visit the sick lion. The fox was clever and discovered the trick. He stood on the outside of the cave at a respectful distance and asked, How are you, sir? I am not feeling well at all. But why don't you come inside to meet me? No, thank you, sir. I notice that there are many prints of feet entering your cave, but I see no trace of any returning. Still, if I come inside, I would be a fool. And the fox saved his life and informed other animals too. So Tofu, the moral of the story is, you should never trust a fake person. <laughs> Tia, I can't do it. Try Tofu, you can. I can't. Anyways, it's too high for me and I'm too short. Listen, Tofu, I have a story for you. Would you want to hear it? Sure. The Sour Grapes Once in a forest, there lived a furry fox. He was wandering around the forest in search of food. I am so hungry. I need to eat something. The fox was passing a vineyard but he wasn't aware it was one. I am so hungry that I can't even see what that round thing is. He went a little ahead but stopped as he noticed the smell of the delicious grapes. Wow, there are so many grapes in this vineyard. My mouth is watering. The fox looked at the grapevine and drooled. The fox jumped up towards the grapes. But the grapes were too high for him. He tried and tried, but the effort was futile. He tried again, and this time he was about to touch them, but failed again. Oh, I am so tired. These grapes are too high. I can't reach them at any cost. He sat there and thought for a long time that how he can get those grapes. He suddenly got up and said to himself, Those grapes are probably sour. In fact, I don't like grapes. Why should I try so hard for them? The fox couldn't reach the grapes and hence escaped by making excuses. But his tummy kept growling of hunger and he had to go without eating anything. So 
Mr. Tofu, the fox had to go empty-handed because he just made an excuse. Always remember, you won't achieve your goals if you give up by making excuses. So let's go and try again. What are you doing, Tofu? I'm trying to water the plants, but this hose is broken. Come, let me tell you a short story. The Clever Crow The Clever Crow One hot day, a thirsty crow flew all over the fields looking for water. For a long time, he could not find any water. Suddenly, he saw a water jug below the tree. He flew straight down to see if there was any water inside. Yes, he could see some water inside the jug. The crow tried to push his head into the jug. Sadly, he found that the neck of the jug was too narrow. What should I do? I am really thirsty. How do I drink water? Then he tried to push the jug to tilt for the water to flow out, but the jug was too heavy. He looked around and saw some pebbles. He suddenly had a good idea. He started picking up the pebbles one by one, dropping each into the jug. As more and more pebbles filled the jug, the water level kept rising. Soon, it was high enough for the crow to drink. His plan had worked. So, like the clever crow, was able to find a solution to the problem by thinking and working hard, would you be able to find one to this too? Why is that young man helping that man to cross the road? That's because he is blind and needs help to cross the road. Oh, how nice of that man to help him. Yes, it's always good to help others. Why, Tia? 
Come Tofu and I'll tell you a story. The Dove and the Ant. One hot day, an ant was walking near a river bank. The poor ant lost its balance and fell inside the water. Oh! Oh! Help me! Please help me! Help me! She screamed for help. As the flow of the river was too strong, she was carried away. Someone please help me! Help me! Please! Someone help me! Help me please! Someone help me! Please help me! A dove was watching all this from a nearby tree. The ant was struggling for life in the water. The dove felt very sad for the little ant. Help me! Please help me! Oh no! The little ant is in trouble! And he decided to help her. Help me! Please help me! He said to the ant, Don't worry my friend, I will save you. The dove quickly plucked off a leaf and dropped it into the water near the struggling ant. The ant moved towards the leaf and climbed up there and the ant reached to the shore safely. The thankful ant said, I will always be grateful to you for saving my life. Few weeks later, the ant saw a bad hunter with a gun. The hunter was targeting at the dove sitting on the tree. Guessing what he was about to do, the ant quickly bit him on the heel. Ouch! You pathetic ant! What have you done? The ant walked away happily as she was able to help the dove in return. So Tofu, just the way Dove's good deed helped him to get out of danger by the ant. Similarly, every good deed we do for others will surely come back to us. Hmm, I will always help the needy. That's like a good boy, Tofu. Somebody help me! The insect has bitten me! Oh God! Come, let me put some ice! Why did it happen to me? Let me tell you a story. The Fox and the Stork Once, a fox and a stork were friends and the fox invited the stork for dinner. Dear friend, I wish to invite you for a meal at my home. I will cook a delicious soup for you. I would love to come. The fox made a delicious soup as promised. The fox was very clever and played a cruel trick. When the stork visited his home that evening, she was given a shallow dish filled with soup. Thus the fox could easily lap up, but the stork could only wet the end of her bill in it. I have made this delicious soup. Myself, enjoy your meal. The stork did not say anything and pretended to enjoy the meal. At
At the end of the evening, however, the stork went home hungry. One week later, the stork invited the fox for lunch at her house. Dear fox, why don't you come to my house for lunch? I'm cooking fish for the meal, said the stork. Thank you, dear stork. I would be happy to come, said the fox. The stork made delicious fish. When the fox arrived, the stork served the fish in a pitcher. The fox stared hungrily at the food, but he could not taste it. He had a thick snout and couldn't eat from the pitcher. So all he could manage to do was to lick the outside of the pitcher. Did you enjoy the lunch, my friend? I made it especially for you, asked the stock with a nasty smile. The fox remembered his cruel trick on the stork and had to confess that the clever stork made him learn a lesson. The stork enjoyed the meal while the fox looked on sheepishly and went home hungry. So Tofu, as the fox did bad to the stork, the stork did back to him too. Because one bad turn deserves another. Now I understand. What are you trying to do, Tofu? I am trying to pluck mangoes from this tree. But the effort is going useless. That's because the mangoes are too far away and the stones are too heavy. Then what should I do, dear? I really want those mangoes. <laughs> Let me tell you a story. The Three Little Pigs Once upon a time, there was a mama pig and three little pigs. One day, mama pig said to them, You are old enough to build your own houses. The first pig built a house of straw. He said, Now the wolf can't come and catch me and eat me. The second pig built his house with sticks, stronger than the first pig's house. He said, Now the wolf can't come and catch me and eat me. The third pig built his house with bricks, stronger than the second pig's house. He said, Now the wolf can't come and catch me and eat me. Next day, the wolf came to the house made of straw. The wolf knocked at the door and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. I will not let you come in, said the little pig. Then I will huff and puff and blow your house away, said the wolf. So he huffed and puffed. The house of straw fell down. And the wolf ate up the first little pig. 
Next day, the wolf came to the house made of sticks. He knocked at the door and said, "Little pig, little pig, let me come in." "I will not let you come in," said the little pig. "Then I will huff and puff and blow your house away," said the wolf. So he huffed and puffed and blew the house away. The house of sticks fell down, and the wolf ate up the second little pig. Next day, the wolf came to the house made of bricks. Little pig, little pig, let me come in. I will not let you come in," said the little pig. "Then I will huff and puff and blow your house away," said the wolf. The big bad wolf tried to huff and puff and blow the house down, but he couldn't. He kept trying for hours. But the house was very strong. He tried to enter through the chimney, but the clever third little pig boiled a big pot of water and kept it below the chimney. The wolf fell into it and died. So the way the third wise pig managed to escape from the wolf without using weapons but through his wisdom would you be able to do the same What happened, Tofu? Tia, today in school, our teacher asked us to write something about the wolf. So why don't you write about it? But Tia, I don't know anything about how a wolf behaves. Come, let me tell you a story, and then you would be able to figure out how it behaves. The wolf and the crane. One day, a hungry wolf was eating his prey. So rapidly that a bone got stuck in his throat. He ran around the forest howling in pain. Please help me. I will reward handsomely anyone who removes the bone from my throat. A passing crane took pity on the wolf. Even though the task was dangerous, the lure of the prophet motivated him to help. So he decided to help him. I will help you, but you need to stay still. I'll look down your throat and then remove the bone. As promised, the crane did his job. Now give me my reward. Reward? What reward, you greedy fellow? You had your head in my throat and instead of eating you up, I let you go unharmed. 
that should be reward enough for you. Go away or I'll crush you. The crane walked away disappointed. Although he felt happy that he had helped in saving someone's life. So what did you understand from this story? That one cannot trust the cunnings of a wolf. Right Tofu. And now would you be able to write about the wolf? Yes Tia. What's for lunch? Come Tofu, Mum has made your favourite meal today. My favourite? Yum! <coughs> oh Tia, something got stuck in my throat. How many times have I told you not to eat in such a hurry? But I was hungry, dear. <laughs> you need to listen to this story. The Goose That Laid Golden Eggs Once upon a time, in a village, there lived a poor farmer with his wife. They had nothing but a little farm where they grew vegetables that they could eat. However, he managed to save a little money each time he sold vegetables from his farm. Eventually, he saved up enough money to buy a goose. He took it home and made a nest for it to lay eggs. The goose will produce eggs which he could use for selling, eating and making bread, thought the farmer. The next morning, when he went to gather some eggs for his breakfast, he lifted the goose and to his surprise, the goose had laid a golden egg. The next morning, he found another egg and the next and the next. Slowly and steadily, the farmer and his wife were becoming richer and richer. Just think, if we could have all the golden eggs that are inside the goose, we could be richer much faster. You're right, we wouldn't have to wait for the goose to lay her egg every day. So the couple killed the goose and cut her open. <laughs> Only to find that she was just like every other goose. She had no golden eggs inside of her at all. And they had no more golden eggs. Alas, now the farmer and his wife had lost the goose and they would never get any golden eggs again. So Tofu, just like the couple suffered because they were greedy, you should be careful too because too much greed always leads to great loss. Oh, got it Tia. I'll be careful next time. For your favourite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Heart family. Subscribe here.